Today, we need to talk about Jungkook's recent live stream and him giving us songs. I also want to get into Jungkook talking about the military and shaving his hair soon. And of course, we need to get into Suga addressing retirement. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hate it or not, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on. Grab your dumplings, hey Spling Bug Marsh, and let's go. Suga recently talked about retirement and the internet absolutely freaked out. And I want to get into this a bit. BTS has long promoted this idea that they will literally sing and perform on stage until the day they die. And we even imagine BTS members holding a mic and singing to us while they're on their deathbed. And while this is a great thing to think about and probably comforting to think that their music will be there until their last breath, it's unrealistic and a little selfish to think that they need to do that. Understanding that while they love music and it's something they really care about, it's still very much a job and very demanding and a hard job at that. Touring, like many artists have said before in the past, is very grueling and extremely difficult to do. We often don't think about what those difficult situations are because we think that being an artist is such a cool job. You go on camera, look pretty, and get paid millions. But no, they get paid millions because the work is something that not a lot of people can do or are even physically able to do. You have to consider that touring takes a toll with travel, things like jet lag, they might not have to work the entirety of the next day, but they're either traveling to the next city or because of jet lag, they're unable to sleep, which means they go on stage without ever having a good night's rest. Things like homesickness if they're gone for literally a year, and then the most important thing is missing out on important personal things. What if a family member dies when you're on tour? I've seen this happen. The shows are worth millions of dollars, and labels are going to put a lot of pressure on you to make sure those shows happen because of the amount of money that is put into it. Artists are often led to think, well, they'll still be dead after the tour, so it won't really matter if I go to the funeral. And of course it does, but what else are they supposed to think and how else are they supposed to self-soothe themselves when they don't think like that? And these are the most obvious things when artists have to deal with logistical things. Pressures of Ticket sales and financial things are often more tough than this. During a recent fan meet after Suga's tour, he talked about retirement. Suga says he does envision himself performing until he is in his 60s. A fan shouted out and asked for Suga to please grace the stage up until his final days. Of course, then Suga responded to ask fans jokingly to let him rest before his final days. And he even said that he didn't even think he would be able to hold a mic in those final days. And I think it's so funny that he said that. I also agree. I think Suga and the rest of BTS members should be able to have time to themselves. I think at least in their mid-30s, they're going to want to consider a family or something like that, and they'll probably be dealing with that. I would imagine a little after the military, the members may want to consider dating for marriage. This doesn't mean they can't make music anymore, but they may opt for less touring and slowly eventually want to fade out of the spotlight and maybe just post a bit on YouTube or something. This isn't supposed to be a sad thing, it's just how life works and we as the fans can support whatever their decision is. On the other hand, BTS members could opt for a life like the rock group KISS and tour pretty often still, so we shall see which direction they take. Jungkook recently did a live stream and everyone freaked out over the stream. It's been a little while since we had heard from him as he has been super busy being the ambassador of Calvin Klein and a bunch of things, but Jungkook decided to come on and talk about many different things. One of the things that everyone was shocked that he addressed was his lookalikes. People wonder if Jungkook is even aware that there are many people who look like him, and they really do. There's people who ideally are not trying to look like Jungkook, people like other K-pop idols, and then there's more influencers who maybe are trying harder to look like him because it's interesting. The people who do dress up and attempt to look like Jungkook tend to get a lot of hate because the fandom thinks they're trying to be Jungkook or creep other people out. This is pretty typical to all artists' fandom though, and sometimes if the fandoms are super sensitive like in K-pop, they'll think that the artists will get creeped out if they notice another person trying to look like them. This is not anything that I think is bad, unless the impersonator is trying to make Jungkook look bad and do illegal things while looking like Jungkook. However, in most cases, I think artists just think it's cool. There is this Japanese wife of an actor. I don't know if she's an actor or what she does, but she went viral because she looked like young Jungkook. 
Her face looks very similar to what Jungkook looked like back in 2013 and very similar. I can see why she went viral. Jungkook actually addressed her and said, we both do look alike and that was very cute. Of course, the woman is not cosplaying or trying to look like Jungkook. She simply just does and I think that's so funny. Of course, you can imagine this being so satisfying to the fandom to hear Jungkook say it. Jungkook also did a bunch of songs and made a lot of armies emotional. There was an AI version of Jungkook, seen in Cupid by 5050, but then Jungkook actually did it on the stream and now we have a real version of it. Jungkook also did sing Jimin's new feature that came out recently, the one called Angel, and it sounded beautiful. I have just reacted to that song on Patreon, I will link that below. We still have a $1 tier that is open, so if you're interested in joining and having a great time fangirling over music, I will link that in the description. Hope to see you there. But then of course, after all the songs he did, he gave us his last song and this is where things got a little funny. Some people on Twitter were joking to say that they were upset because when Jungkook says he will do a last song, he really only does one more song and then leaves. Of course, we can hear him do 5,000 songs in a row, but the moment he is about to be done and leave, we of course want more. And why would we not? He has an amazing, great voice. Jungkook also mentioned something a bit more shocking on the stream, which I think members tend to avoid talking about, especially for years. When asked, they would almost ignore the question or just give a very generic answer. Keep in mind, this is not just media training and people saying that they can't give more info. They legally cannot give too much information on what their enlistment status is. This is all usually confidential and it needs to be private. However, Jungkook did talk about J-Hope for a bit. He said that J-Hope sent Jungkook a selfie and that selfie made it appear like Jungkook was super buff and doing very well. This was after J-Hope's initial training and then J-Hope had a moment to send a message in the group chat and send a selfie. They really are good friends and they keep up with each other. I think most of my friends wouldn't care or think it's a big deal. I think I could send a selfie in a group chat but they probably wouldn't care. And now that I'm saying that I am realizing I probably have very selfish friends. That depressing note aside, Jungkook then talked about how he might have to go now. Side note, I don't know if Jungkook could get any buffer, but that would be fun to see. But Jungkook talked about the military as something he should do, and he actually made a plan as to what he was going to do in terms of his hair. The member cutting their hair had been a big topic of conversation, and how will they look when they cut their hair? Jungkook talked about his plan to slowly cut his hair and just trim a little bit at a time, so armies won't notice until one day we're all like, wait, why is his hair so short? But then at that point, he's bald. There's a couple things we can take from this. One that could mean that the military date is actually much further along than we think because he'd have to cut it real slow for us to not notice or it actually is much closer, which is why he even has a plan. And then the other thing is that maybe he shouldn't have shared that because the moment armies notice even an inch off, people will be like, he's enlisting. And don't think that armies won't take a photo now from the stream and then compare it to the next stream to see even if a millimeter of hair Hair is missing. Jungkook called this hair lighting, which is a word play on gas lighting, because then the fandom will literally be like, is it shorter? Is it? And then you'll have a full debate on if it is. And it probably is already starting since he mentioned it. Jungkook, why do you do this to us armies? Don't we make you happy? Why torture us? Of course, I personally love shorter hair on both men and women, and so I would be very happy to see Jungkook with shorter hair again. So no complaints here. And also, I don't think Jungkook will actually be going through with this because the only way for it to look natural would be to buzz it off at one point, which would make it obvious. If you were to shave it just the sides and then the top is shorter, the next step is to just buzz it. You can't slowly go shorter from there, it won't look good. But anywho, I was excited to see this stream and catch up and I hope you enjoyed the recap for those who could not sit there and watch it. I believe it is still available on Weverse and YouTube should you want to stream it in its entirety. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out my Patreon for more videos, link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you, bud.